Hello, hello, hello. I often get the question, what is the difference between angular velocity and angular frequency? And I think the reason why I get that question so often is that there really is reason for confusion because both have the same symbol in physics, omega. In physics we often run out of symbols and so there are many cases whereby the same symbol is used for very different things. To make it particularly confusing regarding angular velocity and angular frequency, there are cases which I will discuss with you today whereby the two differ as much as apples and coconuts. But there are also situations <laughs> whereby the two are the same. So I have decided to bury this problem once and for all. And I even advise you to watch this video perhaps more than once. I will call it my million dollar video. To erase for once and for all this incredible misconception that many of you have, which is not really your fault. It's part of the fact that both have the same symbol. If you're ready, ready, I'm ready. We have here a pendulum. Length L is a mass at the end. We call the angle between the pendulum and the vertical theta. Pendulum is swinging, so theta is a function of time. That's why I put the T here, to remind you of that. When the pendulum is here, theta is zero. We define angular velocity with the symbol omega as the derivative of the angle versus time. In other words, what is the angular change per second? Totally reasonable to call that angular velocity. I put a t here to remind you that it changes in time. I also put a t here to remind you that it changes in time. We often write for that theta dot. Just a shorthand notation. The angular acceleration would then be the derivative of omega, for which we can write theta double dot. It's the second derivative of theta in time. The units here are angles per time. Completely reasonable to call that angular velocity. The units here would be angle per time squared. Completely reasonable to call that angular acceleration. In the case of the pendulum, every time that the object stands still, omega t is zero. Because the theta dt is zero. By the way, that doesn't mean that alpha is then zero. In fact, when the object stands still, Alpha has the largest value possible, but that's a separate issue. The linear velocity, call that speed if you want to, at any moment in time, is this angular velocity times L. That's simply a matter of geometry. This is in meters per second, so this is the linear velocity and that's angular velocity. This all is internally very consistent and very reasonable. Now, now comes the confusion. This object is in simple harmonic motion. So that means that theta as a function of time is some maximum value, call that amplitude, angular amplitude, times the cosine of omega t. That's the way we write it. I can't help that. That is the way we write it, cosine omega t. This omega has nothing, nothing, nothing to do with that omega. 
This omega is a constant. This omega is 2 pi divided by capital T, which is the time that it takes for one complete oscillation. The higher omega, the more oscillations it makes per second. This omega is a constant. It's not changing in time. It has nothing, nothing, nothing to do with this omega. Let that sink in. I'll give you some time to let that sink in. You can do away with this omega if you want to and replace that by 2 pi over t. By the way, 1 over t we call that the frequency in hertz. I don't add it to confuse you. So let's now look at the motion of an object in a circle with radius r. Could be a string here, but it doesn't have to be a string. We'll just assume that the object, for whatever reason, goes around in a circle. If the object is here, I call this angle with the vertical theta. It changes with time. The speed in the circle doesn't have to be constant at all, of course. The object could do this. So the speed would change in time. Totally reasonable to call omega t the angular velocity in this case, just as we did with the pendulum. It is the change in angle per time unit. It's radians per second, for which we write theta dot. It's totally reasonable to call the angular acceleration alpha, just like we did with the pendulum, and to call that omega dot. It's the omega dt, it's also theta double dot. Totally reasonable. The linear speed of the object in orbit, v of t changes in time, because omega changes in time, is omega times r. Very similar to the pendulum, where it was omega times l. And in the case of the pendulum, this omega, the angular velocity, also changed in time. In the case of the pendulum, there are definitely moments that this omega is zero, that it stands still. While in principle, you could make this object stand still, of course, somewhere here. But if it keeps going around somehow, omega in this equation would never be zero. But it could in principle be zero. Now comes a classical confusion. If this object has a constant speed around, we call it a uniform circular motion, then the angular velocity omega as a function of time is a constant. The angular velocity doesn't change. The speed doesn't change. This omega now remains constant. And in that case, the angular velocity is the same as the angular frequency. The angular frequency is then defined in the same way that we do with simple harmonic oscillations, 2 pi divided by capital T. Capital T is then the time to go around. If the motion is uniform, constant speed, you can obviously write down that theta of t is some constant omega times t. So theta increases linearly in time, and this is the, the linearity constant. Remember, when we have 
linear motion, we have um, distance d is v times t. v is then constant, if v is constant, then the distance grows linearly in time. Here, the angle grows linearly in time. And then, the angular frequency is the same as the angular velocity. So, it is clear that because of the fact that omegas have been chosen for things that at times are completely different, but at other times they are not different, that adds to the confusion. Therefore, I wanted to bury this once and for all. Watch this more than once. It's my million dollar video. It's worth a million dollars. Once you get this right, it will be with you for the rest of your life. Okay? There are problems coming up in the near future in which it would be nice if you can really make this distinction clearly for yourself. Have a nice day, take care, and of course we will be friends after this. Because you will be thanking me for this, for this video, you will be thanking me for this million dollar video for the rest of your life. So yes, of course, we will be friends.